right. Okay, who wants to go first? Or I can uh, I can actually uh, start uh, uh, naming people, Manish. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I think uh, let's have uh, yes. Uh, I have somebody unmuting their phone, so I think we'll have your. Uh, is it possible? Yeah, that will be here. Can I go first? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so um, basically, my story is you know about discovering um, my gift. Current one. Basically, um, what happened is I started my healing journey when I was sixteen. I um, studied uh, Reiki healing, but I always like thought it was a hobby. It wasn't something that I would do, you know, full time or put all my energy into. So um, basically, I used to do healing for family and friends. And um, I'm talking about like probably 20, 20, 23 years ago, like when this Reiki was a mainstream, healing was a mainstream. And if I went around telling people I didn't know about it, like um, people used to, you know, give me weird looks and think I was crazy or something. And so I, I kind of kept it under wraps more because I didn't want to get hurt and stuff. And uh, so I just lived a regular life. Nobody knew about this. And then last year was when I had this major wake up call. And it's not like I completely stopped doing Reiki. I used to do for family and friends, you know, but nobody knew about it. Like the, yeah. like, uh, people in my office didn't know about it. I was just doing a regular job and things. And then one fine day, like I met with a very bad accident. I was driving. My brother was um, with me, and um, the car was like completely shattered. The windshield was shattered. The um, airbags were deployed, and the car actually did a 180 degree turn. And uh, it was it was scary. Like. In, in a split second, you kind of see your life flash in front of you. And I thought I was going to die, but I didn't die. And uh, obviously, and then uh, I, I, I realized that uh, my brother and I, we just walked away from that accident with just, you know, scratches. And it was like a huge wake up call for me. And um, every healer's journey, I feel like begins with their own self, with their own healing. And that's what I had to go through before I actually like, you know, open myself up as a healer. So what happened was I had a lot of emotional trauma. True, I didn't get hurt physically. I mean, I didn't have a flash injury or any, any of that stuff. It was just a few minor scratches and I was totally fine. But the but emotionally, I was like really distraught because that was like my first accident. And uh, what happened was I needed to like heal emotionally. So I started doing meditation and self-healing and long story short, like within a month of, uh, you know, I was fine. I was not anxious. Like, otherwise I would just sit in the car and the anxiety would build up and it would be bad, you know. And uh, I thought I'd never drive a car again. But then one month later, I actually, you know, got into the car and I was able to drive to the grocery store and back without having a panic attack. And around the same time, I felt like I should open up healing to, um, you know, uh, the larger community. So I started doing that. And uh, it's been almost a year since the accident. <clears throat> sorry, since the accident. And I want to say like, um, I haven't found another job. I've been trying, um, I'm basically a writer, editor, and blogger. So I've been trying for jobs in that field. But nothing's been showing up. But then the people who need healing, you know, it's like they keep showing up every month I have a new person to work with and total strangers people I've never met and I also find like as I open myself up to my gifts like it's getting stronger like my intuition is getting stronger something I couldn't do like maybe uh, two years back like I couldn't like tune into a person's energy where the blockages are but right now I can do that and I feel like as I accept my calling and I, as I you know open myself up to serve um, the community at large, I feel like my gifts are opening up, my intuition is opening up. Hmm. So basically, my message to you through my story is stop hiding your gifts. All yeah. of us have gifts. Mine is healing. And I kept it under wraps for like decades. And uh, 
and at, at one point of time, it just wanted to burst out. You don't have to wait for that. Like, you know, identify your gift and go and, you know, explore them. Go and share them with the world because you never know what you'll find because my last year has been just magical because things just happen without me even trying. For instance, I didn't know Ruchi like two weeks back and here I am sitting and sharing my story with you guys. So it's just magical. So I want you guys to also like open up to that magic, open up to, you know, the gifts that you have and share it with the world. Thank you so much for listening to my story. Thank you, Damayanti. It's such an amazing story, you know. It's a, it's a story of complete transformation, you know, and something that, uh, you know, and I love the message that, you know, don't hide your gifts, you know, you, we all have gifts. And yes. I think that is, what, you know, we started with, you know, identify your gifts, share it with other people, say it at least for once that I have this gift, you know, and thank you very much, you know. Uh, uh, the story the what, what uh, interesting I uh, uh, found in your story was uh, you were trying to preserve something within yourself uh, for long and one incident gave you an awakening call that you know what is the power you have and right. you find uh, this this particular unique chapter in in, in in a lot of stories you know wherein some external incident just makes us believe that we are really Absolutely. gifted you know yeah so, so so I've only heard about these stories but yeah I, I can see somebody really experiencing that in real yeah. life as well yeah. yeah, even I thought I'll only be one of those people who hears about those stories. But yeah. it, when it actually happened to me, it was like, oh my God, these things really happen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, what uh, I liked uh, in the story is that, uh, you know, uh, you, you took your own trauma. Uh, through that, you discovered your gift. And then you extended it for other people as well, the healing part of it. And uh, uh, that is really, really... Uh, a, a, a good thing to do, you know. So it's like um, it's like supporting their gift, and they don't just keep it to themselves. You know, they just then want to serve the humanity at large. Uh, but uh, that was uh, that was a very interesting uh, part of the story. Anybody else would like to share something if they if they have? Any uh, comment? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll just uh, add something. You have all have heard my story, but I just. Well, she talked about being a healer. I'm also a healer, actually. I didn't tell you that. Mm -hmm. And my journey as a healer has been a like a fantastic journey. And most of the things have been manifested in my life because I've been a healer. Wow. And I've been Funny. healing. I've been healing hospital. I've been actually. I became a Reiki master in 1998. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, 1998, 1999. That's when I'm going to be very something new about you every day. <laughs> every, you know? Yes. Someday you're going to just, you know, say, oh, I have a tape too, you know? Yeah. I, I would, you know, really. Go ahead, so, please. Uh, and I, then that, I started with Reiki, uh, with magnified healing and hypnotism and the whole works. I've been through the art of living, the whole lot. But then I, and uh, Rene May, now Rene May healing is fantastic. And I'm doing that actually on myself and others. Okay. And um, I, I'm a Reiki master and I've been practicing in hospitals and all, you know, doing cancer patients and all those kind of things. Oh, so uh, it's been yeah, uh, it's fantastic being a healer. She said, I mean, it's it's something, you know, to help somebody and uh, give them relief from their pain is something fantastic, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah. So and but and and um, um, and you can and I have been able to because of being a healer, you know, you can uh, heal yourself also. Of course, your first thing is to heal yourself. Yeah. And, and when you once you start healing yourself you know the blockages start dissolving you can start manifesting your life the way you want it okay. and i will tell you that i have been able to manifest my life because of this i mean whatever i have been till today in the last so many years ever since i became a healer has been actually a manifestation wow. for sharing yeah. that with me and uh, uh, thank yeah. uh, you know damanti for sharing your lovely story and to open the session. Uh, may I request Rahul to go next? Rahul, would you like to go next? Yeah. Yes. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, so my story is uh, like, uh, I have been, sorry, something has popped up. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, this for video. Okay, my story is uh, I have been hardcore product development, so we are passionate about uh, the innovation and driving. And in Whirlpool organization, also I was driving uh, some of the activities. But I always felt that uh, if something new is there, there is always limitation within the organization, and the learning at it, uh, learning curve uh, is limited. So a lot of things is happening in other organization also. So with me, one of on LinkedIn, one of a friend, and we had a chat. And uh, we thought, okay, let's create a community of the people who have like-minded people who can uh, contribute and uh, discuss about some of the topic, which is new for us. We also don't know. We are also learning through books and those things, but that was having a limitation. So that one discussion on a cafe uh, has popped up. So after a few weeks, we put some efforts to connect with people in, uh, on LinkedIn. And now we formed a group of the people who are practicing uh, that innovation piece in different companies. Wonderful. And slowly, slowly, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, slowly, slowly, uh, uh, what we learn is that all are having similar type of problems. Of course, within the, uh, considering the confidentiality of the company, but the problems we can understand uh, at higher level. So after discussing and having a in many informal meet, uh, we understand everyone has a similar problem and all has a different kind of solution. So that gives a birth to a next thing that, okay, let's come together and form a group where we can have a peer-to-peer -peer learning and sharing the experience, something which we are doing right now also in a different format. Uh, the, the outcome from that one is after one year, the, the, this group is very strong right now. Uh, maybe 30, 30 companies, PP innovators are uh, there who are practicing it. And uh, they all are coming together and sharing. Today we had a one session. We are calling external guest and sharing it, understanding how we can solve our problem, which can be implemented. So this was something, a different story I can share. Mm, wonderful. Mm, thank you for sharing that. And uh, I love that how uh, uh, you, you chose to uh, bring together people uh, to solve problems uh, and uh, share their experiences of that journey and then learn from that, right? It's a learning platform that you built. Yeah, and more than that, what, what now we are looking for a vision that uh, as this community is you know, from the India, how we can uh, develop uh, some ecosystem from the India uh, where we can enhance the innovation piece uh, for the product development. So like learning curves, uh, we have seen a lot of good examples in Israel, but why India is behind that? So yep. uh, what can be done? This type of topics has been discussed in that forum. Absolutely. And I always truly believe that uh, one of the problems uh, we faced in India for a long time is uh, documentation of our ideas and our thoughts and all that. Like it's always very difficult to backtrack one innovation and find out how somebody reached there. While in many countries it's very well documented, even the creative process of arriving at that situation. And uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah one, of, one of the things is that uh, being in India, I got a freedom 50 years back. Uh, there is some areas where we all need to work on the mindset. We always are in a mindset. The leadership attitude, uh, leadership part is still evolving. Of course, I don't want to uh, say that it's not evolved, but it's still a lot of things where we can say, take a risk and drive it. So uh, once we collaborate, we get energy from others. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So what, what uh, you know, strike me, Rahul, about your story was a very conscious choice of moving beyond the, you know, uh, walls of your organization, right? Yeah. Um, and I think um, uh, that is uh, what really striked me, you know, that it was a conscious choice. It was absolutely fine for you to be in your, uh, you know, in your own cocoon of your own job and profile, but we thought that this whole, uh, you know, piece of innovation uh, can go outside organization and uh, the real power in collaboration lies in the collaboration and the innovation. Yeah. So, so that is what very inspiring actually. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. Okay, Manisha, would you like to choose our next guest? So, um, can we have, yeah, Nidhi? Yeah, um, hi, Rahul. Uh, great to hear this part of uh, 
my fellow uh, participants here. And uh, the story that I have is of calling. So we keep uh, doing a lot of things because they come in front of us. Like that's the path that keeps opening and we keep uh, walking that path. Uh, but the uh, back of your mind, you always have that there's a calling that I need to respond to. Uh, and uh, not it's not always that you find immediately what's your calling here. Uh, you kind of keep searching for it. It's like uh, what we call uh, in, in Hindi, you have this kasturi, right? Uh, the, the mask which is there in the, in the navel of uh, the deer, but it keeps searching for it all over. So that's what happened to people. I think it happened to me. I've been, uh, for past more than two decades, I've been doing all sorts of uh, things that came in front of me. So I started as a journalist, uh, went on to do a lot of political stories and then moved to social stories. Then I moved to marketing, did product marketing, did uh, all sorts of uh, thing. And then at the back of the mind, it was always, uh, as you go up the corporate level, you always keep on thinking that, what am I doing? This nine to five thing, I'm, the, I'm chasing someone else's dream. I'm, I'm delivering to someone else's deadlines, right? Uh, where is me? Where, is, where do I, I stand there? So after, uh, if, you, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, you'll see a series of divorces, right? Uh, you start with one company, you keep on moving and moving and moving. And somewhere you say, okay, I've done enough of this in my own business. So that's when, but my calling, of, I realize, is always uh, a story. So I, I started with a story. Uh, uh, if I have the time, I'll just tell you what's brief. So I was in school. And uh, I was a big, big, big fan of uh, Jagjit Singh, who's a singer. And uh, he was performing in Calcutta. I was in class 10. Uh, I wanted to go, go and watch that program, but uh, it was too expensive. So idea was, how do I get there? So what I had uh, started doing by then is write some small poems, and, uh, give it to small uh, local publications. So I reached out to the publisher and say, uh, the feature address there and say that, uh, if I get you the interview, would you take it? And uh, he realized that I'm uh, such a 15-year-old, you know, and how would I get it? So he told me that if you get it, I'll publish it. So that was the thing, and I had called up. Uh, you know, the newspapers in those days would say that who is the um, official uh, host? So you will need name the get the name of the uh, hotel. And those were the days of PCO and STD uh, booths. So I went there, called them up. Uh, they connected. I told them that for this newspaper, and they connected me. And I had told them him that I want to. Uh, interview you. So he told me that, okay, come come for the concert and post the concert, I'll give you the interview. When I went there, the concert went on till about 10 p.m. and you know, uh, you have to come back home. So I didn't do the interview, came back home. The next morning, around 6-ish, I called him and uh, said that, sorry, I couldn't because it was too late. So he said, okay, I'm going to the airport. So if you can come I, on the way, I can give you the interview. When I went there, he saw me in the lobby in my school dress. And he was like, do you want me to interview for, interview for uh, your school magazine? I said, no, I'm going to interview you for the newspaper. And he started laughing and said, if it ever gets published, you do send me a news print. So that's how it began. And uh, that, uh, the interview did come out. And that's how I got into journalism, just by that. So I started doing, then I realized that it's, a, it's an easy way. So anyone would come uh, down from Bombay and perform. And if I like the person, I'll go and interview. And I'm, that's how I started. And then I got into Doodarshan, from there to uh, ETV, then from there to Sahara, from Times Now. So it just been, just kept happening and kept, uh, something came in front of me. I, I just got there without any training. Uh, I, was a I was a television journalist all my life. Never saw a camera in the first, when I we were given one. Never saw uh, an editing suit. Uh, we were asked to do it yourself. So you kept learning on the, and that's been a fantastic thing because when you go there unprepared, you, it's, it's like you're thrown in the water, all you can do is swim. So that's okay. how you keep learning. But at the back of my mind, it was always there, what am I doing? I'm, I'm doing uh, something that comes to me. Uh, but I realized that all I want is to dig out a story and tell a story. And uh, so that's what I'm doing now. Uh, I dig out stories for from the corporate. Uh, we do a lot of... Uh, the common stuff like your blogs and store um, white papers and stuff like that. But what we try to do is that uh, find the story within it. It's just not that, oh, I went to that company and I delivered this product and I have 30% uh, savings and stuff like that. But even there, there's a story. There's a human aspect to it. What did you do? What problem did you solve? And 
there's there's also something about uh, there's something that that's different. So not everything that you do is same. So that's what we try. So I've, I've somehow developed that nose for news, right? Uh, that's that's where I try to dig out, and that's why we are called we storytellers. So we tell story, and we tell everyone's story, and this is my story. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Nidhi. It was really wonderful. I think a typical fangirl moment turning into a full-fledged career, right? That would be the caption of your story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, but then uh, the fangirl moment also, like, let's see if you look at that. I was also at that point of time also seeking a story, right? Uh, as a journalist, we always keep seeking a story. Not that we are able to tell the stories that we want to. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I made a move uh, away from journalism. But uh, yeah, so. Finding a story is something which kind of gives me a high, if you want to tell it, apart from the coffee. So, yeah. Right. Well, that's, that, that's really wonderful. I mean, um, what was inspiring was, uh, you know, the, the sheer uh, confidence in oneself to make it. And this whole uh, putting up of this calling from a newspaper, established newspaper. And I think this whole picture of you know, Jagjit Singh standing in the lobby and you turning up in a school dress actually just flashed in front of me. You know? yeah, yeah. And I think that that was the real power of the stories. You know, so thank you, thank you so much for sharing. This. Any other? Also, yeah. Uh, Go ahead, so Jagjit. Okay. So Nidhi, uh, because you you said that I have been telling stories of people. You know, sometimes uh, you know it's something that you know somebody tells you to do, right? What is this recent story you've told that you always wanted to say, which is like for you, you have told that story. Any story? So, uh, as I keep saying that I find stories in every place, right? Yes. Uh, uh, a story that I recently came about uh, is, is something which we see every time, right? Uh, I, have, I have a maid uh, uh, who comes uh, from, uh, from the uh, North Bengal, uh, a very very small uh, place, and most of the people from there are working around us. So uh, she she uh, she was she has been always been talking to them, and now suddenly she has managed to give uh, a phone, uh, a video uh, like and a smartphone to his father. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so the other day I saw him talk, saw her talking to his father, and uh, he's asking her about simple things. Well, what are you doing? Where where it is? And she was toying around, and she showed my son. And uh, uh, the guy, uh, uh, the father asked me, uh, him, her, that who's this? Who's this uh, child? She told the, uh, he's my adopted son, right? And, and that gave me such a wonderful joy. You know, uh, the ownership, the, the, the relationship that we have been able to build. And yeah. I don't think there can be any more, something more fulfilling than that. You know, a 24 year old uh, telling uh, that I have a 10 year old adopted son and saying this to her father who was uh, you know, some thousands of kilometers away. Uh, so, what this is a story of, of, of a bond, right? Something which yeah. we can never, never uh, dictate that this is, yeah. dictate her to, I can dictate her to do certain things, you know, but uh, the bonding is something which has to bond. You can it, it has to happen. So that's a story which I just found recently. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. So, yeah, Sandeep, you want to share anything? Or, uh, guys, uh, this is an open platform. So, anybody who want to uh, comment, comment, share, highlight, or you know, express their own thoughts on each one of our story, because this is the platform which celebrates stories. You know, where it can inspire us and motivate us and heal us. You know, so yeah. So feel free to comment and you know share your thoughts also. Right. Hi, this is Shivam. I just wanted to share something. If yeah, 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 she won't go yeah, ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. So first of all, I didn't want. I mean, I didn't know that we. Uh, I'll have to share a story. So, but I'll. It's not a story. It's my experience uh, in Basu. We have heard many people saying that surround yourself with good company who make you feel motivated. But I, I think there is there is an other side to it also. So, Sometimes you need to be, you need to have people around you who make you feel bad. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, so during my college, so I, uh, I mean, I belong to a middle class family, and my father could afford me a certain sum of pocket money. So I could not uh, get 
branded clothes for me but there was a group in my college who was I mean, was like they were very rich and they were from top to bottom all branded and every, i mean everything was so lavish and they felt they quite a few occasion in, in the four years of engineering they made me feel bad about my appearance my clothes my overall personality and i couldn't do anything at that time because i could not push my fathers to go beyond his limit what i could max do was to improve my situation was try hardest possible for my job the uh, the job that i eventually got in the campus placement so the effort that i gave then to get that job was was very high because of those people who made me feel bad about because i could not wear branded clothes and all and all the all those lavish things now due to their inspiration the inspiration that they gave me i got the job and then couple of switches and i'm in a decently uh, pretty decent uh, from the it it perspective and decent financially i'm doing decent financially and i can afford everything uh, i mean in terms of branded clothes that they used to bully me uh, in the college now the branded clothes and all those things do not fascinate me because yeah. i can now own them so Uh, from the branded clothes on and all those perspective financially i feel content so now i i'm looking for something which challenges me or which bullies me is maybe role in the organization greater opportunities so what i eventually want to want to say is that don't always those people who sometimes bully you can be a boon in for us in the life because they actually uh, make us strive for the to be like them and that is where we achieve things mm-hmm. and so that 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 was the experience i wanted to share yeah so the the good thing and the great thing here is that you used a very negative experience uh, and made a constructive thing out of it you know a lot of people would have crumbled you know or felt really really bad and not done anything about it yeah. and probably lived with that complex life long but what you did was transform that negative situation and use this as, as an inspiration for yourself and that's commendable and i would like to add i mean uh, yeah the reason please. why I, i could do that is i had some good people also but that spark that um, wish came because of those negative people around me but the, mm. the best friends of mine they definitely supported that's good so, and you know, this issue bullying is, uh, is uh, i think is uh, is is very was you know very recent yeah uh, you know the governments and institutions have begun to take notice and begin to design policies around uh, uh still long long way to go but uh, you know that you uh, took those uh, experiences as a pull towards gaining something and that's a good way of uh, uh you know your things uh, are moving forward in, in the positive direction so thanks a lot for sharing that shivam and i think that was a very very interesting story that you shared with a good lesson in that yeah so you yeah, go ahead go ahead nidhi uh, if i can just add to what uh, shivan was saying so uh we always say that and uh, some of our panelists also said here that we want to connect with the like minded people so if we can always connect with the like minded people we are surrounded with uh, a very uh, plain and simple and a comfortable world and nothing mm-hmm. broke the comfort zone right so only when we are challenged when we are pushed and when we are on a collision path uh, path of sorts then that's when you start finding your own strength and your resilience and your ability to stand up so the whole fa- while it's always good to have people with whom you have the right way to learn and you can connect but uh, i think it's also important for us to meet with people who we don't agree with um, mm-hmm. and uh, that's where we find uh, the true uh, strength of us and we also learn from their strengths uh, the opponent's strength uh, is something that we learn to imbibe in us so this one is bad wonderful yeah. what, what what stands out for me in the story is the the whole absorption of the thing uh and, and still being positive and constructive about it you mm-hmm. know it, it's it's very um easy to given into this and slip into uh, another fall in terms of 
why I'm like that or, you know, blaming on oneself or destiny. But I think uh, what, what one thing stood out for me in your story, Shivam, is uh, immense capacity to absorb and still turn it into a positive energy. Positive. So I think that's, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So thanks once again uh, for sharing your story. And um, uh, now, uh, can we have Karishma uh, share, share your story, Karishma? Karishma, you there? Okay, in the meantime, when Karishma comes back, uh, can we uh, move to Jimmy? Jimmy, would you like to share your story? Yeah, yeah, sure, I will. Uh, thank you. So um, my story has always been of, um, you know, a quest for learning and searching. So I've started my career five years back. And, um, um, you know, so I've, today I'm a storyteller and I've reached here from many attempts, uh, which probably did not go as I expected. I, I've started my career as a journalist and, you know, it did not work well. And then I moved to, you know, different platforms and today I'm here. And each of these attempts, which is, you know, if, if other people say these are all failed attempts. But my mm -hmm. first job as a journalist taught me that I'm never afraid of camera and I had no experience before. And I was so positive and I was so, um, you know, I was never nervous to speak in front of a camera. So each of these attempts or, you know, um, a career stint have taught me um, or helped me explore one hidden talent that I always had. And when each, each of these door closes, right, when um, the career did not go well or one job uh, did not go well, another one will always open because I was always open, you know, I didn't, I really, if I was rigid, I wouldn't have got any of these opportunities, but I was always open and I wanted to learn. And um, today, each day I learn something new, you know, if it, it could be a term, it could be, it could be a new theme, but each day I learn something. So my, the this, this search for learning has really helped me reach where I am today. And how do we, how do I validate it? You know, I don't have uh, from outside world perspective, you might be, you know, you should be famous or you should have uh, some sort of an acknowledgement to validate all your achievements. But for me personally, I've never expected that I will be a storyteller. But today mm -hmm. when I'm a storyteller, I, when I look back, I understand that I was telling stories in one form or the other, you know, mm -hmm. probably in advertising, uh, it, you know, we, we call it in different titles and we say different kinds of stories, but that is what I've been doing all these while. And today I'm in a comfortable position. I have got the title as a storyteller. That's hmm. it. Uh, if I can just add, uh, Jimmy is my colleague. Uh, so we both, uh, that makes the we storyteller among us. Wonderful. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> right. No, uh, so uh, and anybody to offer any comment, uh, guys, uh, any, any, yeah, I'd like to say something. Um, that's a beautiful story. Like, there are no mistakes, like in life, like you think, like, when you look back at your life, you think, Oh, I made so many wrong turns. And there are no mistakes. They're just lessons. And all these experiences, like kind of make you the person you are today. Yeah. So um, that's, that's a great uh, message that I took from Jimmy's story. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I just wanted to ask Jimmy that. Uh, and also, I think, I think it's like if you look at yourself like you're you're a collector you know or you're a person who's on a journey and you know in a journey you find so many things you know and there are things that you accept and then the things that you reject you know and at the end of the journey you become what you collected and what you let go of so i think it's a beautiful story of you know collecting and letting go of you know things and you know still becoming what you wanted to become yeah, yeah. or what you were all along evolving you know so I think it's a, it's a beautiful story of a, you know, a gypsy person who's like collecting things and stuff. So it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And I wanted to just ask Jimmy that, uh, you know, when you decided to move into, uh, uh, I would say, uh, pursuing your passion, uh, did, you, did you have a moment or a, a stage of confusion and fear leaving a secure job employment and then trying to get into something which is more you're passionate about uh yes of 
course because um you know i never had a mentor mentor per se you know it was all my family who were not really sure if you know journalism would be a prospering job also my journalism job was not really a secure job um you know but i still had opportunities but i you know i took the risk i took the risk and i decided you know whatever may be the outcome i'll i'll bear it no issues so you mm. know i'm grateful that i'm i'm really you know happy that i take that risk Hmm. Okay, that is great. That's fantastic. Wonderful. Uh, I personally very connect with uh, your story, Jimmy. Uh huh. Hmm. I think, uh, and I think it was a choice to again interpret the failures as the lessons or as a judgment on ourselves. You know, so and 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 we tend to, and you know, it depends on person to person. So. Yeah. there was a time in my life where i took it as lessons but at the same time there was a time when i took it as a judgment on myself so each each path has its own um, yeah you know, kind of a taste and a journey but i i connect a lot with with your stories thanks for sharing yeah yeah, yeah. thank you thank you jimmy okay yeah. uh, so karishma is back i wanted to ask yeah, karishma is back yeah so karishma would you want to share your story Karishma, you there? Back, and she's not back. I, I think maybe her connection is having some issue. Um, okay, uh, we can move on to Neera Kohli. At uh, hi, Neera ji, how are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> having a good evening. Really, yes. Uh, very good evening to all of you once again. And really fascinated by the stories. And uh, like I think uh, one of the, uh, I think Shivam only shared that. Uh, uh you know like i was also not prepared actually this is this being my first uh, interaction here so but yes definitely uh, i would say that uh, my story would begin like this that uh, as uh, an educator and who was uh, given responsibilities of administration as well as uh, conducting classes being connected to all the uh young students you know i would say the senior students and with the teachers faculties you know i always took that as a each day as a great learning for me and uh, in fact you know that is how i learned over this experience that holding their hands be it teacher or be it students was a great uh, quality which i really have to imbibe and uh, also you know with that they would be actually you know we would be creating a uh this hand holding would be a great in building our institution so in fact in that during those times when i uh, was working uh, really you know i didn't know that actually i was working on myself i was just giving in my best to the institution and i didn't realize that how i was getting the strength all this while mm. so uh in fact you know uh and many things many a times many situations were there where i was you know uh, faced with the impossible tasks which were there in front of me but somehow you know with my uh, inner uh, you know you can say that those that in a call which i really uh, you know i could make those things you know possible for my institution for my students and all in fact that went a long way to say that once i got retired you know i was really uh, i mean uh, Uh, with great pride i felt that uh, you know many of these uh, my uh, students you know of 10 years back 12 years back they came back on my retirement day and uh, it was i think first of its kind you know where they expressed their love and you know their regard and i somehow felt that this is where you know each educator has to build up that kind of a communication with them and uh, in fact uh, that really brought not only joy in my life i would say that but yes at the same time it was a sort of a you know uh, a landmark you know which i left after i retired in, from my institution and uh, in that uh, process you know in fact uh, when i just uh, now that today i am speaking about it three things you know which has been uh, my inspirational words has been the beauty benefit and the good mm-hmm. 
Now, beauty, I don't say the physical beauty, but beauty in the relationships. Hmm. Benefit, I don't call it as such, you know, where I get, you know, the monetary uh, benefit, but right. benefit of having those uh, solid bonds with the students where they don't forget to wish me on the teacher's day or on my birthdays or, you know, just to say, hi, hello, ma'am, we are in now settled in Denmark or Germany, you know, and really want yeah. to be in touch with you. And these days, especially with the online, this thing, one student said, ma'am, 62 students, you know, of yours, they are all waiting. A Zoom call, Karlo, please. So, mm. I mean, that is what I suppose, you know, that is what the benefit I regard, which I have uh, got it. And I think I'm, I'm sure that that also must have gone. Then the third mm. word, which I would like to share is that good. Now that good is because I have always been believe, believed, believing that the goodness in me will bring goodness in others. And that yeah. is what, you know, I think again, I would say that when we are building up the community, like even in today's this thing also, each one of us, we are doing good in our own little ways. And, yeah. you know, uh, and they are just drop in the ocean. But at the same time, if this, uh, you know, consistent efforts are there, then definitely, you know, instead of having those, uh, uh, you know, uh, remarks is that kya ho gaya hai sansar mein and what is happening and with what is this yes. pandemic and all that, we will definitely be able to create good stories because I feel that this is the memory, memorable time which we are creating stories for the children of the next generation. Well, yes. I can say, you know, for my uh, grandchild, you know, is four to five years old, who is not allowed to go out. But how we are mm -hmm. indulging him, you know, in yeah. the indoor activities and giving him that kind of a uh, atmosphere where this learning also never stops. And we are, you know, teaching certain kinds of values. Each one of the family members are giving, you know, the kids of today. And that is what is there. So yeah. last line, which I would like to take is that just, you know, that uh, Salman Khan's being human, <laughs> I don't believe in that. I, 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 I always, you know, when I talk to the teachers also, I always used to say, and today also when I conduct workshops, I always say that being human is different, but being human is different. different. So let us just all, you know, move towards that of being human. human. Thank you yeah. so much for giving this opportunity. And I'm yes. sure I really look forward to, I'm really pepped up with all the stories which I've heard. Yes, Thank you yes. so much. Thank you so much. You know, it's a beautiful story, you know, like beautiful <laughs> journey also. And you know, <laughs> so much. But what I think is so amazing is that this human and this being human, this difference, you know, is so profound, you know, and we don't see it, you know. You know, we, we all make this effort, but I think this difference is something that everybody should try to understand. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's really a humane story, you know. It's, really, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a humane story. It's a lot of uh, inspiration, a lot of uh, respect. Uh, yeah. You know, for for the teachers, so thank you. I mean, I, I was I was very much. And I also like Manish. I also like Niraji that uh, you know you saying that uh, even if the times are changing, the atmosphere is changing, and now we are confined to our houses. The learning must not stop. Yes. And this this statement can only come from a teacher, you know, <laughs> from a lifelong educator, because you know. They, yes. No, the education yes. doesn't yes. stop. The learning does not yes. stop. Not stop. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, the boundaries, the, the things that cannot stop the mind from learning. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely new ways of learning. So that's yes. that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I think we have Karishma back. Karishma, can you? Um, yes. Is it audible? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I would not be able to on the video because once I do it, I lost the connection. So I'm just, uh, you know. No, that's okay. That's, that's, right. that's, okay. Yes. that's fine. Sure. So um, my story is, you know, my story is basically, uh, you know, would talk about five basic things. And that's what make me what I am right now. That would be belief, family, evolving. Mm -hmm. And of course, challenges are thrown when, when the, time, the time when you are not ready at all to take them honestly that's what my learning why am i saying so because i belong to a family wherein um, you know all the ladies were basically be you know being a housewife and focused about that and my father was the one who allowed me to go out study 
and that was a pressure on my shoulder that i am the only one who been allowed to go out i got into a, a you know mba that was a decent mba not tier one college got a job doing pretty well and one day in my job i realized that the entire organization has been asked to put down the papers and oh. that was the time when uh, you know that that was the time when not everything in the family were also going well there was a financial uh, you know responsibilities as well Right. and that time i realized you know that day that day when night i got to know that my mom needs certain you know for getting that test done there is certain amount that we need though my father was financially stable he could uh, you know arrange all of that but that day i sit back you know i was lying in the bed and i suddenly wake up at you know that that sounds a little dramatic but that happened with me i wake up and i said what am i doing for my mom and i have i have been into my own problems that एक्सेल में पिविट नहीं लग रहा है और यू नो स्टफ लाइक दैट आई वाज आई वाज नॉट सर एम आई डूइंग समथिंग रियली फॉर माय फैमिली एम आई इट समथिंग डूइंग रियली समथिंग टू इवॉल्व और आई एम ओनली अ 9 टू 5 पर्सन यू नो एंड एंड इन दैट जर्नी व्हेन आई वाज टोल्ड दैट यू नो यू हैव टू पुट डाउन एंड यू हैव 5 मंथ देयर वाज यू नो आई थिंक इट वाज ओनली 2 वीक्स दैट आई हैड टू गेट अ न्यू जॉब एंड टू यू नो गेट अ स्टेबल जॉब आल्सो so uh, you know that time i i spoke to different odd people i asked for help of course i asked people that if you can help you know basic things if you can help to rebuild my resume because i deadly need to get on a new job i have responsibility or so so in that point in time i realized that you know whatever you hear from outside world it is something that you absorb uh, will make you what you are okay there were people who told you that no you sit back get on to a brand but i know that i cannot wait for a brand i have responsibilities then there would be a set of people who would say uh, you know get into a call center job no job is smaller or bigger but my aim was to become an hr professional there were some people who will who used to say that uh, you know we'll help you but i never got a call from them so the key takeaways from that particular journey was you know uh, you know i worked on myself hard i i was in continuous touch with my family and i and i focused on you know whatever input that i'm getting from every interview i go back and make a diary that okay is interview yeah. mein ye question pucha tha iska mujhe answer nahi pata tha google it you know so <laughs> and i landed a job and i landed in a job a good job of course so you know my journey my journey has taught me to own responsibilities never forget that you always have a fallback option that is your family and be a fallback option for them as well yeah you have to you have to ensure that and of course you know uh, don't shy away from the challenges because once the challenges are thrown on you then only you see that you are capable of doing it so that's how you know it's like rani lakshmi ji ko bhi nahi pata tha ki main lad sakti hu but jab aaya to wo lad li hai so that's how you know that's my short and sweet story of self involvement that's what yeah wonderful i mean i, I can totally imagine what you must be going through when the company asks you to put down i mean put the papers you know like yeah. all of you yeah yeah in fact my entire team and uh, and that that very day we decided that okay aaj ho gaya hai we should go out because uske baad pata nahi hum hamara kya hone wala hai <laughs> quite a good team you had you went out to celebrate it <laughs> yeah, i mean we it was uh, it was a dilemma you know you can see on the faces that you know everyone would have responsibilities and you know in your in your heart you know that okay this is about to go happen but you want to cheer people around you work with them. so that's yes. how How yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. How long was that, uh, Karishma? Sorry. Uh, how long back you had this experience? I I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I can't hear the question. Maybe network issues. Mm-hmm. So, Karishma, what what Sandeep is asking is how long back was this? This was uh, this is very recent. Honestly, this was six months back. Six or seven months back. No, yeah, six five to four months back. Okay okay all right and uh, you know uh, thank you for sharing your story what i also liked uh, for me what stood out is you know your uh, ability of uh, learning that you know you went to every interview which you succeeded or did not succeed and you made a list of the questions of that and then you went to google and then you asked sort answers for them and that demonstrates that uh, 
the tremendous amount of learning ability that you have you can never fail in life uh, karishma you know that's a very good quality mm. thank you thank you absolutely yeah 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 you want to say something uh, neeja ji mm. yeah yeah i i was i was just uh, appreciating you know the 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 confidence of hers you know did not because this is what actually in, in the present day also we should be i mean teaching our children our uh, young ones how to face the failures yeah. the success they always know it you know they would climb the ladder but then i think you know uh, again the well being of the students or the children they should be you know in that path we should be teaching them how to face the failures and you know sometimes and the great learnings happens only because of that yeah thank you thank yeah you. so uh, my my only comment here is that i was one of the person uh, in karishma's story you know who witnessed her story at a very close quarters i was one of the interviewer for karishma uh, in <laughs> oh. my organization right oh. and uh, you know uh, and that's how i know karishma and you know uh, at times you 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 connect the bond you know and and karishma now i can share it uh, i i connected with you and i think we share a common bond bond of resilience hmm. bond of hope bond of giving back something and uh, you know a, a bond of uh, you know a belief in oneself to never give up you know and just to give you all a background uh, we ultimately offered the job to karishma uh, and uh, she was in dire need for it but she walked on from that job because that job was a contractual job that was not a full time job and she she was in the situation but she still believed that she deserves better right and and i had numerous hours of conversation about what my organization can offer her but she was very clear in terms of her mind what she deserved and what she what she what she wanted so that's the story karishma right thank you so much thank you so much sir mm. okay and uh, so moving on we have uh, nandini uh, nandini ji are you there okay so maybe nandini is uh, phone is also having network issues uh all right so uh, manish uh, we have come to uh, the conclusion yeah session and i think uh, would you like to give a closing remark this sure sure so uh, yeah so that brings us uh, you know the closure to the second edition and once again thank you all for coming in and uh, sharing your own stories i think it was uh, a perfect uh, you know palette of different stories uh, you know stories which moves people which inspires people uh, and and there are a lot of healers also so i can very confidently say that you know stories which heal people as well you know so yeah. thank you so much um, i think we developed a, a new bond uh, through this community uh, and what was surprising was that Uh, you know the whole experience what i shared about karishma i think we are not connected by individuals i think we are connected by stories you know and then why i was so persistent in getting karishma on board was the story which i could connect uh, you know her story was my story and my story was her story so i think that's the power of stories and and um, we are really uh, glad that uh, you know you, you you guys took time to come to this platform a uh, couple of things as a next step uh, you know in in the epic stories what we do is that we uh, reach out to all the participants separately uh, try to understand uh, and you know work with them to share their story to a larger set of group of people so because we believe that each story has has a lot of power a lot of lot of value and a lot of uh, you know power in that sense so uh, we will reach out to you separately uh, to curate your stories uh you know take certain threads out of that and and uh, you know carve out certain messages and we would be very glad to work with you in sharing and broadcasting your stories you know which can create an impact on others which can really inspire so trust me there are a lot of people who would be willing and very keen to hear your stories because who knows their your story might be their story as well right yeah. so uh, that is one thing which we would like to share and thanks once again um uh, any any other remarks uh, closing remarks uh, uh, thanks of note uh, ruchi and sandeep 
So again, you know, a wonderful session, uh, beautiful stories that, you know, I could personally connect with. So many lessons, so many interesting uh, anecdotes that probably I'll keep thinking about. And thank you guys for coming and, you know, sharing. And uh, I hope to see you again uh, in the next edition. Uh, we will keep you posted. Um, Sandeep? Yes, definitely. And uh, thanks a lot for stories, uh, as Manish mentioned. Uh, we'll get in touch with you, maybe for a small little uh, bite or, or the text of your story. Uh, text. Of. And uh, yes, uh, any quick feedback before you guys leave would be good for us for our encouragement for the next uh, session. Before that, I uh, just want to mention uh, the next uh, session of Public Stories is also going to happen on Saturday. Uh, we will be announcing the date, but then the next Saturday of the day, we will have to have the feedback again with new people. Uh, but yeah, thanks once again. And any feedback for today's uh, session or the concept, uh, yes, you, can, you can tell us right now. Uh, Nidhi, so I, I, yeah, okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. No, no, no. I just want to thank because it was one of a kind of, uh, you know, um, a, a webinar because, you know, it, it, it's, it's very unlikely that, you know, pe people come together on a platform and share their stories, right? It's always about some technology or the other. And this was, uh, you know, differently wonderful. You know? <laughs> it, it was so fascinating to listen to all their stories. And thank you so much. Uh, well, I, I would just say, you know, that, uh, like uh, just now you had mentioned that with the teacher in me comes out, you know, always. So <laughs> I would say that the best part of the uh, today's uh, this session was that, you know, I also came to realize that when we lend our ears to somebody, you know, you always learn so much. Yes. So this is, you know, this is where we have learned, you know, to listen to other stories and where and maybe, you know, nobody shared it or maybe I also was not aware of it or maybe I also didn't, you know, lend that keen ear to that story. So that again, it was an amazing experience. And uh, again, you know, it gives you a lot of insight to the human mind also. To how each one of us, we go through different experiences. Maybe, you know, in my uh, four to five lines or two, three minutes or five minutes of it, you know, maybe a more story is there which is hidden. So again, you know, you thank you so much for giving this opportunity to all of us. Thank and you. I feel so blessed, you know, that I got connected through LinkedIn only uh, to your. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got it. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and just, uh, uh, as Ma'am was saying about listening, so just a small uh, humorous incident. Uh, last week we were on a client call, and we realized the person was speaking Java and Python not a word that we could uh, understand. And uh, it took us a lot of time to kind of read between the lines and find the story there. Because in all this, there's, there's a whole there said, uh, people speak in different languages. Uh, and sometimes it's very difficult to find what they're trying to say. So listening, uh, a deep listening is something which uncovers stories. It's not uh, only in technology or something. And any time, even if uh, a language that we don't understand, uh, we hear, uh, if you hear, say, someone speaking Bangla or someone speaking Telugu, if you just lend your ear a bit closer, you'll be able to decipher. And that's also about human uh, human beings or people around us. If you just listen to them a bit uh, with a lot of attention, you'll be able to find the stories that you're looking for. So thanks a lot. It's been a really wonderful experience listening to all the stories. And, uh, yes. And you. is uh, contact on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, email ID and phone numbers, you can take a screenshot of it. Uh, if you guys want to stay in, uh, stay in touch and have some more ideas to share with us or join the community, uh, please do that. And uh, thank you once again, everybody. And have a wonderful, beautiful Saturday evening. And uh, we hope to see you again and hope to host you back again for the next uh, session of Epic Stories. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, so, thank you so much. See you. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.